Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks. Thanks for joining me this morning. Glad to be here. I need you. <laughs> need to be filled. Fill my cup. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to hear that. And I need you too. So that's awesome. All right. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning, 730. So we know this is our time. And I'm really excited to be with you here this morning and uh, have another conversation that I hope will do its part to inspire you and to help you continue to live life really large. And, um, and really, I think to look at things in a different way. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. So I am going to be teaching a little bit from this book. Um, so if you'd like to write this down, this is Aspire by Kevin Hall. And I actually have the privilege of coaching with Kevin and uh, being a part of a mastermind group that he has that uh, is called uh, Genshai. So I'll tell you a little bit about that too. So what I'd like to do is invite you to take notes uh, and invite you to just think about uh, what you want to get out of this morning, maybe set an intention for what you would like to receive in the next 30 minutes and you know how it could set your week off really in a, in a great way. So I'm going to flip to the slides. So just give me one sec. You know, I'm juggling a few things. Good morning, I see Jill's on. How are you today? Good. And good morning to all my peeps on Facebook. Thanks for hanging out there. Thanks for being a part of this tribe and for uh, really being connected and sharing great stuff. I love seeing everything that people post on the Facebook page. And uh, it's, it's really great to see how this has become a community. That was my intention. I really wanted to create a community where we could support each other, where we could grow together, uh, and where we could really have an opportunity to set some goals and make some things happen. So I'm going to share my screen with all of you, just because I have a couple of quick slides for us to keep me mostly on track. <laughs> and um, to talk to you this morning. So um, as I mentioned many times, um, this came out, this whole Mojo um, vision came out of me taking a break. I was working from home as I have been since March and I was sitting out on my deck. It was a nice day in May. And I was thinking about some conversations I had had that day with people who were really struggling and you know, just feeling challenged by what adversity was showing up in their lives and um, basically you know what 2020 had been delivering with covid and all of the things that uh resulted from that and and other other things we know have transpired over this year and it's interesting because in the beginning of the year as we all do we had um i think many of us had conversations around 2020 being the year of vision and creating all these great goals and some of us felt like, oh my gosh, now what? You know, I got thrown this, this, this punch out of nowhere. I have, you know, these, these challenges and, and roadblocks that popped up. And this is not the year of vision. And I'm going to disagree because the vision is how you see things, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about vision this morning and a, a chapter out of my friend Kevin's book. And if you can see things more clearly because of what's going on around you, is that not an opportunity? And if you can learn some things about yourself and others and, and shift gears and learn how to pivot on a dime because of maybe some of the challenges that have been thrown at us this year, then is that not a gift and an opportunity? So this is still the year of vision. This is exactly what this year um, it's just unfolding in ways maybe you didn't plan, but it is exactly what you probably needed. You just didn't realize it was going to show up in a package like this. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and, and perspective. So the whole, as I said, the whole reason why I wanted to do this whole program with you, this mojo every morning, um, is, is also for me too. I wanted an opportunity to keep my head on straight and I wanted an opportunity to uh, take some time and plan with intentionality uh, and, and purpose, how I wanted to make 
a difference and how I wanted to contribute. And if only one person got something out of this, I was going to be really happy. Um, and I know it's impacting the lives of more than one person. And, and to me, that is a huge blessing. And so Mojo is just to bring life and energy. So I thought it'd be great to do that on the first day of the week. Yes, bright and early too. And why not, right? Get your Mojo going, grab your coffee, and, and let's just kick it into high gear because you have choices every single day on how you want to live your life. So if you want to let 2020 roll over you like a bulldozer, that's your choice. Or if you want to face the adversity and make a decision about how you want to continue to grow and set goals and how you want to aspire to, to get those results in your life, then, then that's, that's the gig, guys. That's what we're here to do. So I am teaching you uh, this morning one chapter from this book, Aspire. And um, I have, as I mentioned a minute ago, the, the pleasure, the honor, and the privilege to know Kevin and to work with him. He is a coach and a mentor, one of my coaches, um, and I do participate in um, his Genshai community to mastermind. And I encourage you to grab this book on whatever device you want to read it on or order the actual book. Um, and uh, I'm sure he'll be surprised to know that I chose to teach this uh, this morning uh, because he's such a humble person and he's just really I think a giver and someone who just wants to teach and impact the lives of others. Kevin worked very closely with Stephen Covey. So you can imagine what he brings to the conversation. So um, we're gonna talk about this one uh, chapter in the book called Sapere Vedere. And um, I'm gonna start with this quote by Wayne Dyer. When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And I'm just going to share a kind of a funny story with you that that relates to this in a way or created a metaphor for me. Um, over this past weekend, I was celebrating my birthday, which was Friday. And thank you to all of you who reached out. It was uh, great. And I'm very excited about this new year ahead as I prepare for another new decade starting in a year. But we'll talk about that another time. Um, so we had... Uh, decided to go away for the weekend. It was great. And um, uh, my husband and I went away with a very good friend of mine and we went up to the Finger Lakes and we really had a great time. And it's, if you've never been up there, it's so beautiful. And you know, I love my wine. So we got to visit some great wineries up there and um, it was nice to, to get away and to be outside. And of course, all the safety precautions being in place, we were able to enjoy um, a really nice weekend. And we were driving around the lake, uh, the one lake that we were driving around was Cuca. And uh, we were talking about how beautiful that lake was in particular. And it would be great to have a house that we could rent in the future, maybe extend our trips. Usually we only go up for a weekend. So it would be great to extend our trips for, you know, maybe a week and rent this house. And my husband and friend were talking about where on the lake they wanted to uh, perhaps rent a house. And so when you go around the lake on this one side, um, there's, there's a, a high road and a low road, right? So my husband was saying that he would really like to be a pie and he was talking about the view and he was talking about you know, the sunset and, and it, you know, it, was, it was lovely. And then my friend said, well, why wouldn't we want to be on that lower road? Because if we're on that lower road, we'll be able to see things very differently. We'll have a bigger, more expansive view of the lake and, and be right there and up close. And it was just interesting to me how two people were talking about renting a house in pretty much the same spot. Just what vantage point did you want to sit at? And how would that change your view? And how would that change your experience? And so I was thinking about that in, in terms of life and how many of us could be traveling life with partners and whether they're life partners or business partners or what have you. And, and we could be experiencing the same thing, but differently. And I got thinking about how when you change the way you look at something, of course, things do change. And, and the power of being with a coach or a consultant who can help you look at things from a different perspective. And so that's where we're going to jump off on uh, our mojo conversation this morning. So this term, sapere vedere, and I, I'm going to read some things right from the book, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, because why not let Kevin teach us, right? So, so, um, so Pere Vedere is a Latin term that became the motto, believe it or not, as I turn the page, 
for Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and when he was asked the secret of his genius, he would always say, sapere vedere. And what this translates into um, is, well, the Latin word or the, or the Latin root sapere is to know or knowing how. And vedere means to see. So this is a term, not a term that means to know how to see, knowing how to see. So da Vinci said that the root of his genius was basically vision, right? He knew how to see. So that term that, we, how many of you have said that term seeing is believing? So think about it in a different way. What if believing is seeing? What if you approach life with vision first? I'm sorry. Let me say that again. What if you approach life with belief first? I apologize. What if you approach life with belief first, not with, with having to see the evidence first? What if you entered into anything that you were doing with a set of beliefs, with a core belief that allowed you to create vision? How would that change things for you? So people who really live life with this sapere vedere, they look forward. They look ahead of themselves. And they look inward because they realize that the source of their genius is right here. Of course, we can spend a lot of time reading books, listening to people, connecting through platforms like this, going to classes, and gaining knowledge is important. Yet that knowledge then has to work within what you already know to believe, what you already believe to be true here. And so what if your genius and your creativity really started from here, and what you learn on the outside was only to accentuate that? So Kevin continues to write here on page 91 that da Vinci understood that we truly see with our brain first. We truly see with our brain first, our heart second, and then our eyes third. So knowing how to see, he realized, was crucial to living a life of significance. So again, 2020 is the year of vision. So let's focus on that. Let's look at how we create a vision for our lives, for today, for tomorrow, and what goals you want to set. What are your intentions? And how will you live life and really approach every opportunity with a new sense of excitement and mojo every day? So when you create this concept of believing first and then creating that vision, it enables you to focus on what you want to see happen. Just chew on that for a minute. It allows you to focus on what you want to see happen instead of focusing on what you don't want to see happen. So what we believe, our beliefs become the rules we live by. And so our beliefs are shaping our thoughts and they are shaping the things that we do and say, which bring our actions, right? So if our beliefs are focused on finding the negatives or finding the problems, you will find them. Yet if your beliefs could shape a vision of opportunity, of possibility, of desire, of significance, would that change the path you start to, to follow? So people without vision, often they fixate on the past. Think about it. Vision is always about going forward. Vision is always about what you want to see out there ahead of you. So if you do not create enough vision in your life, where will your thoughts go? Where will your attention go? So, so without having that vision, without having that focus on sapere vedere, it is very easy to fixate on the past. And then what happens is we kind of hitch our thinking onto all the things that happened before. And what's happened before does not determine what will happen in the future, successful or not. You have a new opportunity every moment of the day to create a new thought pattern, to create new vision, to create new actions. So what has happened before you does not determine what will happen in front of you. And so if we're hitching all of our thoughts on what has happened in the past and only letting hindsight dictate our next move, you have a very high chance of repeating history. Now, some history might feel good, yet does it allow you to grow? And sometimes when we um, really focus on the past, it can create a lot of different feelings. 
It might create feelings of sadness even or, or depression because if we focus on things that didn't work out well, we're not giving ourselves an opportunity to create opportunity going forward. So I think that having that, that view of the future is equivalent to possibility. It's equivalent to growth and opportunity. So as we create this vision, we are discovering more and creating more about our purpose. And purpose is really the important ingredient for sapere vedere. Because once you know your purpose, and you are connected to your purpose, and you are passionate about your purpose, and you allow that purpose to drive you, you become a pathfinder. You are creating um, a vision and a desire to go after the things that line up with your purpose. You look for a bigger lantern to, sh to shine on that road ahead of you. You'll grab a flare, a lantern, whatever you can, so that you can be a pathfinder to connect everything that you do or align what you do with your purpose. So when you think about being a pathfinder, uh, let's just talk about the path first, right? So the path is the, is the road we travel on. So do you have a clear path laid out in front of you? Kevin in, in the, the book talks about uh, the path is the way we travel the vision is where we're traveling to, and your purpose is why you're traveling. And I love that. That's probably one of my most favorite parts of this chapter. So I'm gonna say that again. Our path is the way we travel, our vision is where we travel, and our purpose is why we travel. So Da Vinci also uh, has been quoted as saying, may your work be in keeping with your purpose. So that's the alignment. May your work be in keeping with your purpose. So, you know, we often say things like, well, you did that on purpose. Um, and it just means that you are doing what you, you set out to do. There's intention behind your actions. Um, so visualizing is an important part of aligning your path and your purpose because now we're creating the vision of where we want to go. And there's so there's countless stories of how vision uh, and creating that vision ahead of time resulted in in that person having exactly what the movie was playing in their head. So this is someone that um, uh, Kevin talks about in the book, and I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, Peter Vidmar. Uh, Peter is a an Olympic gold medalist, and he shares in the book his personal experience of. Um, when he started training for the Olympics and he was about 12 years old and um, he started, so he started training for the Olympics when he was 12 years old. He didn't actually compete in the Olympics until he was 23. So he held on to a vision for 11 years. And I find that remarkable because I know a lot of us can struggle with long-term goals. And so he had that commitment, he had that passion, he created that vision. He saw himself competing in the Olympics every morning. Um, he put in an incredible amount of preparation time. Uh, he put in an incredible amount of, of hours, uh, succession, um, a succession of practice and hard work being in that gym, early days, long days, exercising over and over again. And all he's, he talks about is how he constantly focused on what he wanted, he was constantly visualizing the desired end result and how that and how he was able to connect with that through his emotions and through his actions. He had a vision of what he wanted and it was to become an Olympic champion and he was determined to stay on the path until it happened. And I think that's a question we all have to ask ourselves. How long are we willing to stick with something until we succeed. How long are we willing to stay connected to our vision and do whatever it takes to get it before we decide it's time to shift gears or give up? See, he, Peter would see himself performing a perfect routine. He would, he would see himself standing on the podium receiving his gold medal. He would visualize people around him and their reactions. 
he would feel the gold medal in his hand and around his neck. He would just play that movie over and over again. And he would ask himself, uh, not so much about what it would look like only, but he also asked himself, how would it feel? And I think when you really get into how something's going to feel, that's when the adrenaline kicks in, right? Because we can get really connected to that feeling. So every day at the conclusion of an exhausting six hour workout, Peter and his teammate at the time, Tim Daggett, would stay in the gym after everyone had left and visualize themselves in the Olympic finals by conceptualizing exactly what they needed to do in their routines. And when the Olympic finals finally did arrive, those two were the last performers for the US in a tight battle with the team from the People's Republic of China. And when Vidmar and Daggett performed nearly perfect routines, the routines they had seen and felt in their minds and hearts for years, the US won gold. I don't know if any of you watched that particular Olympics or can remember this, um, but I just, I got goosebumps even reading that to you. So the power of your vision can move things and create opportunity for you and make your realities, uh, your dreams become a reality. So again, a reminder about the power of vision and creating a vision board. Um, I, I don't know if you saw, but we have a member of our Mojo community that reached out to me and we had an amazing conversation uh, just about a week ago. And um, it was um, an opportunity for her to share what she has gotten out of being a part of this community, this Mojo community. and. Um, it was an opportunity um, for her to share what she was inspired to do in creating the, the vision board and how her life started to, uh, how things started to happen in her life. So um, it's, it's an amazing um, interview that you want to catch and, and we'll probably repost. So creating a vision board can really bring an element of actualization into your life. I would recommend having more pictures than words because our mind does work in pictures and uh, it loves those images. And that's really because our mind doesn't know the difference between reality and fantasy or real and fake. It just, it, it accepts whatever you're programming into, into your mind. So if you're looking at these pictures over and over again, and these are pictures that represent your goals and aspirations, you're gonna have an emotional connection to those pictures, right? And your brain is gonna figure that out and say, oh, we want this, we, we need to have this, or this is already happening in our lives. And so it's going to just call it into your awareness and you will see how that's gonna change your actions because your beliefs are changing. Your beliefs are changing, your beliefs are growing around these images, you're believing that these are things that you're going to have in your life, you're acting as if you already have them, and so all of the beliefs shape your thoughts and actions and it starts to become the results that you're getting in your life. So I, I think that if you don't have a vision board, this is a homework assignment for you. It's a great activity to do with your family and to create um, this, this image that you will see every day, put it in front of you, look at it multiple times through the day and let it create opportunity in your mind because it will show up in your life. So um, again, we talked a little bit about a chapter in the book Aspire on uh, the chapter called Sapere Vedere and it, it's all about vision and it's all about uh, creating that, that vision for your life and visualization, which really we know is the first key to success. People talk a lot about the secrets and keys to success. I'm gonna tell you the first step is visualization. If you can't see it in your mind, you're not gonna go get it. So that's your, your opportunity is to create uh, some time to sit and visualize what you want your life to look like, where you wanna go, what you wanna do, how you want to do it, whether it's career, whether it's personal, spiritual, it's really creating that vision in your mind first, because that is the first key to living a successful, significant, purpose-driven life. Um, because the best way to predict your future is to create it. So when life starts throwing a lot of curveballs at you, as I know this year has, has been, uh, when you are centered knowing what your vision for your life is, then you can navigate the external circumstances much easier. And it is, it is really about uh, 
having that inner compass. Um, and I'll end with this. Uh, Kevin also talks in the book about Michelangelo. So we talked about Da Vinci, Michelangelo. So when you think about these, these people in history, these geniuses, and, and the amazing creative work that they were, were able to leave us for um, centuries, when, they, when you go back and you do some research on these individuals, they all talk about the same thing. So Michelangelo um, said that in every block of marble, I see a statue as plain as though it stood before me, shaped and perfect in attitude and action. I have only to hew away the rough walls that imprison the lovely apparition to reveal it to the other eyes as mine see it. So what, what do you see as that piece of art, as that work of art that is your life that might be trapped in a block of marble right now? What do you see? What do you wanna create? And how do you pick up the right tools to start to chisel away at it to reveal that image? That is your action for the week. So I, I hope that you enjoyed um, this conversation and uh, taking a look inward and looking at creating vision and knowing that you have to believe it before you can see it. And then once you see it and create that vision, that is really the, the secret to success. Um, so as always, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are or what your ahas might be. If any of you here with me on Zoom would like to share, um, I do appreciate you being here on Zoom. And I love that so many of you are watching this live on Facebook. So um, is anyone willing to give me an aha before we go on to the rest of our day today? I like the idea that you have such great continuity. About three or four weeks ago, you had a segment, uh, you had a morning presentation on sort of the things that you should be doing in your life, setting goals. Um, you know, like what's one thing I can do that will change other areas? I mean, you act, I'm quoting you, <laughs> actually. Oh, thanks. Okay. Um, and, you know, from there, that's sort of a map. And then from there, you can further glean and sort of build on this vision board that you were speaking to. So very well done, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jill. So what did you get out of this personally for yourself today? Um, you know, it, it was interesting, you know, you talk about the future, but sometimes, um, you know, I did have a recent uh, passing, my dad died. So, you know, there's a piece where the, this past, as opposed to the future, seems to be kind of encroaching on my space. And that <laughs> sometimes erodes my sense of vision. Um, so sometimes, you know, in having a message such as yours makes it, uh, better for me to hear this. So it's an aha that yes, I'm getting back and centered to a, a reality that uh, will make a difference, especially this week. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh. And, and you know, of course, memory, so, so being connected to memories, right? Feel good, positive memories is great. And that, I don't mean to say that by focusing on the past that we shouldn't have have those um connections or those connections to great memories i think what we have to remember is how does it make us feel so when we relive the past if those memories make us feel loved and full of joy and if it's warm and it's it's a great way to feel connected to that loved one then that's very healthy right if, if when we dwell on the past though and those thoughts make us feel like we are not capable of moving forward or they make us feel sad or they make us I feel don't. frustrated or angry or depressed, then that's a different, that, that's what I mean by, you know, we have to keep our vision ahead of us. So thank you for sharing that. Sure. Um, any other thoughts before we sign off for the morning? I, um, the visualization for me is is big. I'm one that I kind of live my life that way. Like I always kind of set a goal. Um, and during the whole close down, I did write on a piece of paper 2020 with a bunch of arrows and different little bubbles of things that I wanted to accomplish. But I think now Good. what you're saying, visualing, visualizing it is more important than words. Um, I think I want to focus on that. 
like how you said you have to see it so yeah you do and i will say though there is power in words too right because the the visualization the pictures the movie we're playing on our head that will show up as the words that we say and that's actually kevin's book is uh, discovering your purpose through the power of words. So he, he focuses, I think it's seven or eight words. Uh, don't forgive me, Kevin, if I don't remember, it's 11 words. Um, so it's 11 words and it's a, it's a, pow it's powerful. So, um, the words we use are important as well, but I love how you took that. You took the image of 2020 on a piece of paper and you drew. So what you did, I don't know if you know this, you created a mind map. Oh, yeah. So that's actually a technique. I mean, we'll probably talk about that in a future mojo too. Um, I've coached a lot of people to create a mind map, um, especially for those of you who are very visual and creative thinkers um, and who don't want to just write stuff out. You want to see. Uh, so you start with that one concept in the middle and then basically allow your mind to start mapping out where your thoughts go from there and how the thoughts are connected. And so that's awesome that you did that, Carmen. Thank you. Yeah. And Sarah, congratulations. You're working on your book. All right, girl. That's fabulous. Did that, is that something you just started? No, you're muted, by the way. Um, no, it's actually an, uh, it's actually an old project um, that I, um, let all kinds of other people get in the way of my doing, if that makes any sense. That yep. makes a lot of sense. And congratulations on getting those people out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. getting Amen. the lantern set back on your path. That's awesome. Yes, yes exactly. Good for you. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Well, listen, thank you. What's that? Thank you. You're welcome. Can't wait to hear more about it. So listen, everyone, I trust you got something great out of this. Use it. Um, take the opportunity um, and the fact that you spend some time with me every Monday morning. And one thing, just take one thing that you want to take action on and, and put it into motion and allow that to start to create change around you. So I appreciate you all so much. Have an awesome day. And I will see you very soon. Yeah. Great. Bye. 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 Have a good week and happy birthday. <laughs> yes, exactly. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. We'll celebrate all month. It's all good. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.